just about sailing August 2020. This is part one of installing this wonderful beast which is my Lofram's X2 windlass with the optional capstan. It's got a thousand watt motor. <coughs> I've, I've installed it temporarily on this workbench, that was easy enough, so what could possibly go wrong? By the way, before I need, go any further, thank you very much for all the comments on the last video which was about varnishing and I don't know very much at all about varnishing so uh, if you are doing any varnishing don't copy what I did in the last one but do look at the comments because a lot of people know an awful lot more about this stuff than I do and there's some great comments and hit, hints and tips and so on in there. Um, the next video by the way, the part two of this, won't be the next video, it'll be the one after because I've been doing lots of other bits and pieces to prepare for certain things. I started up the engine for various reasons um, I've got things prepared to get ready to put the rudder back on, uh, internal grab rails, external grab rails, been doing a little bit on the galley. So the next video will be a sort of a, a mishmash of all of those things. But this one is specifically about looking at what I need to do to modify the chain locker. It needs to be modified for, or it needs to fit two criteria. First of all, it needs to drain because it's not self-draining. Now the Mark II Mirage did have a, or does have a self-draining locker and thank you very much Peter ages ago you sent me when I say ages ago I mean years ago you sent me some photographs of your Mirage Mark II I've also got some plans which helped so my original plan was simply to convert the chain locker in on Serenity to a Mark II version which has the drain hole on it the issue that I had there and we'll see this later is that as well as having a draining locker which the Mark I doesn't have I need 300 millimeters which is this length between the, the deck, the underneath the deck, and the bottom of the pile of chain. So if we put that on there, it sort of, it comes down to there. And I'm really tight for space. And with the Mark II version, I don't really get all that space. So that's the issue that I had. And like with most things that I do, I do a bit of theory. I do some templating. I try things out. And I think I've reached a solution, but do feel free to comment. And, um, the first thing we did is I got Lucy to take the chain and the road out of the locker, which is where it was, and so we ended up with a, a starting point of an empty locker and um, a pile of chain on the ground. So let's let's start from there and see how this goes. So we now have a pile of chain and an empty chain locker. Thank you, that Lucy. I'll tell you what. You can ravel the rope up as, my present. as your present. Because you would have done that with your competent crew, wouldn't you? Oh, right, this is very unfair, but this is um, 60 metres of rope that Lucy's going to coil up. <laughs> but she's done a competent crew, so she knows what to do. You need to do one of those time lapse, like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Find somewhere to hang that and then what? with so the rest of my chores. <laughs> Completely empty of chain. Sorry about the light by the way, my light broke down, so I think the camera can just about pick this up. This is basically an empty space. The that's the deck. I'm looking at the underneath of the deck there. That will be reinforced or changed. I'm gonna do something about it uh, before putting the windlass in and there will be a new bulkhead, some sort of a fiberglass bulkhead going up to sort of there and then an inspection hatch. So I'm actually going to put a, as they did with the Mark II, a hole, a drain hole at a certain point there. I'm going to measure it and check it because I don't like drilling a hole for the outside world but uh, it is, I'm just going to copy what was done on the Mark II and that should be fine but I'm still going to have a 
a waterproof bulkhead. I should keep the the wooden surround because I think it looks quite nice. So this is this is the immediate issue. Um, this is the Mark One, uh, which is was basically sort of completely open, very very deep. Um, the chain locker goes way down to pretty much the water line, if not slightly below it. And then what the Mark II does is it has a shelf um, that sort of angles and then the, um, the drain hole goes out there. And you can see where that actually comes in reality is you cut off an awful lot of your chain locker. You know, the, the chain used to only go up to about there when it was, um, when it was all in there, that 60 metres of chain. Um, and the distance from the deck, which I'm just tapping my finger, I haven't got my ruler here, but um, trust me, 300 millimetres, which is the minimum you need, is about there. So it was okay previously, you know, not fantastic amount of room, but it's really tight. To get all of that chain, the 60 metres of chain, plus the 50 odd 60 metres of road or whatever it is that I've got in there, is going to be nigh on impossible. I mean, I might be able to move this down a little bit. Maybe that's the answer. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's that's the issue that I'm facing anyway. I thought it would be simple to just convert from Mark 1 to a Mark 2, and that might well work, but I'm not 100% convinced yet. Let me show you a close-up of this shelf thing. So what I've done is I've literally made a cardboard mock-out. This is the shelf. It's difficult to see, but it is sloping forwards so the hole would be at that point there and the water would drain out nicely and then you'd simply need to make it all waterproof up here and that'd be a lovely solution. Um, look at the amount of space underneath. I'm quite surprised at that. I think it could go down lower, but is thinking it could go down lower good enough to rely on the safety of your boat? I don't know, I'm really undecided about this. Very interested in any comments that anybody's got on this. So I'm not <laughs> sure how useful having glue tape is. What I've done is I've marked off from just underneath the E to Serenity straight down. There's some blue tape on there. Sorry, it's only had blue tape. That's where the chain locker bulkhead currently is. So the chain locker finishes sort of about where my finger is on that level currently. Now with the Mark II, see this line going across here? That's where that sort of floor is. And where my finger is now, that's where the actual drain hole is, which as you can see is really quite high up. And of course what this does is this restricts the amount of height available there. So this is my conundrum, is I really need that height. Um, but if I try and get that height, it means I'm straying away from the converting a Mark I to a Mark II. And again, this is slightly difficult, but that's the hole. So here's the hole of the stem. That's where the hole should go and that's the bit I'm going to lose. So one alternative, <laughs> looking down there into the, the grim, is, is maybe keep it as it is, but then actually have a drain at the bottom there, and then have a pipe going from it, which goes into the bilge, and I know a few people do that. So it would kind of mean going from, this is where the, the bulkhead sort of carries on underneath the bunk, so it would be kind of taking a drain plug from there, or maybe slightly higher up actually, um, and then putting a false bottom in, and then following it down with the pipe, and then right the way, because the problem is Serenity doesn't really have a bilge as such, and then it would have to come through there, along there, underneath here, which is sort of next to the water tank. All this is eminently doable, by the way. And then it would come out here, so sort of out there. And that's the bilge, that's it. Yeah, there are there is an area underneath this floor, but it's sort of cross areas and, and it is hollow, but they're not linked up. There's no, and there aren't designed to be, there's no limber holes or anything. So I could get, the water down to there but the chances of it getting clogged up and so on it's it also mean you're constantly having to pump out and I want to put I've taken the the feeder off there I want to put a an automatic pump in as well as a as a manual one there. Another option might be to have a sort of a false floor there somewhere 
and then underneath it I have a pipe that actually goes to the outside but the pipe's actually got a seacock on it so you could open or close it. The prime, the prime mover on this is I must have 300 millimeters between there and the top of the chain. What I probably will do, and Lucy's agreed to this, is make a few of these at different heights and see how low I need to go to get 300 millimeters. Uh, yeah, to get 300 millimeters of distance between there and the top of the chain. I hope that makes sense. I might, I might get the felt pens out and draw this. Yes, I'm going to get the felt pens out and draw it. Sorry, you have been warned. This is the Mark One. Mirage. I think you can see it clearly, but this I just put a line down there. That's that's the current bulkhead in the V berth, and there's this huge, great big space in the front where currently, originally, the chain was just sort of piled up down here, and the hawser pipe sort of came down here, and it was all. So a big, big, big space to play with. Let's have a quick look at the, the Mark II. So broadly the same. The bulkhead seems to be in the same place, um, but you can see there's a floor that's been put in here, and. The anchor, obviously, there's a lid on the top of here, by the way, that's another difference with the Mark II. So the anchor can stow there with the anchor chain in there. The problem with, and the, the hole, the draining hole, is, a, is about there, so the, the water can go out. The water line, by the way, didn't make that clear on the last one, is about there. Um, oh, by the way, just, uh, just <laughs> as an aside, this is... In um, the Mark One, the heads, the, the through holes, are kind of here underneath the bulk, here and here, and I've taken those out and I'm going to move those, so I'm converting that to look a bit more like the, like the Mark II. Yeah. Um, so my concern here is that with the road piled up here and the, what's the new colours to choose from, and the chain on top of it, um, there might not be, in fact there won't be really, the 300 millimetres there which the, the windlass needs. Right, so because obviously one option that I could do is to take the Mark 1, put the floor up here and convert it into a Mark 2. But what I'm thinking, if I can get away with it, if it works, is to instead put something quite a bit lower down about there, but instead of having a drain hole here, which I think might be a bit close to the water, is to actually have an internal, what colour should I choose, orange, I haven't used orange yet, to have sort of an internal sort of through hole here with a pipe and then an exit at the side of the hull coming out there with probably, I know this is belt and braces, but probably with a seacock on it as well which means that the, the road could pile up there with the anchor chain on top of it and hopefully there would be 300 millimetres there and then the windlass obviously kind of goes on the top like that and everybody's happy and I will have to make sure, I will probably make this stronger and put in a watertight inspection hatch in it. So that's that's my that's my current thinking, but I need to need to do a few more real life sort of measurements and tests and things and see if this actually works. But I, th I think that'll be alright. Right, so the good thing which hopefully is not a problem is the fact that I've got a massive amount of foredeck. This line here, again that's where that bulkhead is for the chain locker you can see that these cleats have been moved to this central position and you might be able to see that there's holes there and there where the, is it hawser, the chain hawser thing is. So I'm going to put these cleats back there and the windlass is going to go in the centre. There's already 
um, plywood that's been fiberglassed over under these bits here. I'm going to re and somebody's put a piece of plywood under here, but they haven't fiberglassed it under, over. So underneath here, there's going to be a big triangular piece to actually reinforce this. Right, so I'm never convinced with my measuring skills, particularly when it comes to measuring from the inside and then seeing what the distance is on the outside. I mean, I tried this when I did the uh, putting the through hull for the holding tank and I kind of put an X outside to try and figure out where I was going to drill through. And I was reasonably accurate, but not desperately. Right, so this is it. I have my drill. I'm going to go inside. I've marked up seven and a half from there. 18 from there and I think that's where the hole should be <laughs> obviously well I think it's obviously I need to get it that where it is inside is more important when I actually do the bigger hole I'm going to drill it from the outside but um, let's go and do it and you can watch there and see it doesn't really you know to be quite well anyway we'll see won't we so here we go no turning back hopefully the light isn't too bad in here sticking out and go and see what the damage is. Fingers crossed. You already know this is just so unfair. <laughs> well as we can see that's the drill. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm about uh, a tiny little bit off but that's that's not too bad. So what I'm going to do and this was, several viewers suggested this and my daughter actually suggested it straight away is I've got some super strong magnets. These are Magnet Pro warning small magnets. And so they don't scratch the hull, I've got some of these things that you put underneath the feet of chairs and so on. And I'm gonna just stick these on there and then take these in strategic positions, check the magnets outside, and then I know that the line that I'm drawing on the outside is exactly where things are gonna go and it just gives me a better idea of what things look like. Well anyway let's let's do it and then I'll we'll see what happens. Alright so I'm gonna take these in strategic positions on the inside. And then just along here a little bit just so I can get the the level of where the um, bulkhead is, or you'd call it, I don't know, thing for the bunk. Right, let's go outside and see how close these are to the markings I previously made. Right, so I think you can see the blue against the blue, but I'm not 100% sure. So, that corner one, my prediction is that it should be about there. That's not bad actually. Look at that. Which means that the other one should be along there. Wow, this works. This, this really works. And I don't know if I put this high enough that I can reach. Oh, I can't reach this. I need to go and get something to stand on. I think so. Oh, that's a surprise. Look at that. That was completely the wrong angle. Just doing a close-up in case that wasn't clear. So hopefully you can see not too far away where the th that was the one that was way out. <coughs> right. Now what I did is I went and put another one inside. Again, absolutely up to the bulkhead. And that bulkhead looks vertical from the inside, but it's a real slope from here. So assuming that something is vertical is not a good idea. A little bit like I was saying a couple of videos ago when I was doing that bridge thing for the double base. Everything is, a, is an optical illusion on a boat. There are curves everywhere. So 
but that, that is reality, that is where that bulkhead is. So here we are, this is what I meant by the optical illusion. That's the internal bulkhead, which is absolutely upright, but of course the bow moves in three dimensions and it looks, to me, it looks as if it's sort of sloping there. But if I move around towards the back of the boat, <laughs> you can see from certain angles it does look upright. So, right, so this is my current thinking. I put some more magnets on. So, this was the original line I just drew. Actually, let me take that off. So this line up here, that's the Mark II version of um, Mirage. Put these magnets here to mark this out on the inside, so, so I know this all fits nicely inside. So I'm thinking of putting a new floor in there, having a little through hole from that compartment going down here to the actual outlet, probably on a seacock. I know this is belts and braces coming out just there, and I think that will be absolutely fine but I'm probably going to mock it up first and then put the chain in and see if it all fits because I don't want to get this wrong pull it up and then I can undo the knot yeah that just needs to pull it up and then you can cleat it off or whatever so this is the good bit because basically Lucy is literally going to do all the work and I'm just going to check that it's all right down below It is going to be heavy. Yeah, but look, I used to do this with the anchor on the end of it, with all the chain, and in a two-knot current with a three-and-a-half-ton boat. Yeah, but... What? I'm a wimp. You are a bit weedy, aren't you? I'm not a bit weedy, I'm very weedy. Right, so whilst you do that, I should go and get the rope ready down below. Right, so what I've got is a wooden platform here at the height that I showed you on the outside. And then I've got a board that I've cut off <laughs> if I get it in. So basically, if the rope and chain combined are under the height of this, then I'm all right height-wise. Height I'm gonna put the rope in first, and I've got 50 meters of eight millimeter, no, 50 millimeters of 14 millimeter rope, and then I've got 60 meters of chain. So I'm literally just gonna shove this in here. Right, that's taking it up to about there. I'm going to leave that out so it's easy to, to get it out. Okay, Luce, do you want to start? Um... You ready? Yeah. Scared you. you scared me. Why would I do that? Because you're mean. Pigeon fight. It's fine. They're, they're having a moment. It's, it's a shame because it's not in the middle, so it's not accurate. No, it's also easier when you're down there. Oh, I'll go down there and help. Then I can just like pull it straight through without having to okay. push it as well. Big dad's got the hand. I've got to the end. Do you want it all through? Are you joking? Got to the end. Got to the end. Yeah, shove it all through. <laughs>
Yeah, that's okay. That's it. Excellent. I call that a success. Woo! Right. So you guys out there in YouTube land, I think you can probably see that it's underneath. It's underneath that level. <laughs> this is. So can you see, Lucy? <laughs> I can see my bun. You can see your bun. And you a can bit of hair. Yeah. Okay. So Lucy's hanging upside down the hatch. <laughs> so this is this is indeed good news. You can see the chain behind there. Um, there are gaps down here. It's coming in from the side, so I didn't put it particularly well, but there is easily 300 millimetres above that. So I think this is the plan we're going to go with. But more on that when I manage to get the deck hardware sorted out and so on. So that is good news. Good news, Luce. Woo! Right. By the way, somebody's had her first lockdown haircut, which she got somebody else to do as opposed to me. I, I do mine myself. I mean, what, what do you think is better value for money? How much did you pay for your haircut? Thirty-four pounds. Thirty-four pence. I mean, that's outrageous. <laughs> right. The, t the task now is to get all the chain back out, um. and I'm going to sort of pile it up neatly there. Okay. So Lucy is doing all the hard work here. What else is new? Uh, going to do the rope, we can do that from inside. Is it going through here? Yeah, it's probably easier. You can take that, if that thing's in the way, you can take it off the way. Right? right, so here we are. It's actually taken quite a few days to get the hardware off, because sometimes I had to drill it, sometimes I had to impact drive it. Um, I've even still got one screw head stuck in one of these things, but it's clear, there's lots of space. So this is where they were. And they're going back to where they were previously, originally, where there is already some, some reinforcement under the deck, which I think looks better. And I'm gonna line this up properly this is going to go about there. That's the line, by the way, that should line up with the um, the stem fitting, not not this centre line here or that centre line there. Does that make sense? There's, there's loads of room, so there's just lots of tidying off to do. But I think. I will leave that to another video, which will probably be the one after next. So, stay safe, um, enjoy the rest of your summer, and see you next time.